For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Death is sure. Death is more sure than anything on this world. For every baby that is born, death will follow. And in God's love, Man upon his death, that's not the end. The Bible records that there is an afterlife. And in the natural state that man is born of sin, born into trouble, and God's love that he sent his son, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Sin, death, gift, Jesus Christ, the love of God. There has to be a problem with our death. Not only do we lose consciousness and we lie in an empty box, but that's not all death is. Some people believe that death, once death comes, that's it, life is over. But the Bible speaks otherwise. And when you come upon man's death, you have Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Now the wages of sin causes death, and yet God's gift, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. And this has to happen before you die. Once death has come, once death is sure, you are set in the eternal life. The afterlife that the Bible speaks of, and there's a heaven and there's a hell, and not all people are going to heaven. Not those who die in their sins. Since the wages of sin is death, and death causes sin, we are all sinners. We have all spoken a lie at one time. We have all called the boss and said, hey, I'm sick, and you're not. We've all told some little white little truth that we believe a truth that's actually a lie so we don't hurt others. We're going to proclaim to our children pretty soon the Easter Bunny, which is a lie, the Tooth Fairy, Santa Claus, they're all lies. And the Bible states that one of the Ten Commandments is thou shalt not bear false witness and when you tell a lie you're a sinner. And the wages of sin is death, Marcia. but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So, death is caused by sin. Sin causes death. Sin is a cancer in our life. And sin destroys Man wants to believe evolution is getting better and better and better, and yet sin destroys, sin decays. Every year you look in that mirror, you're getting more wrinkles, you're getting more gray hair, you're breaking down more because of sin. you got to take more pills because of sin. If evolution was true, you would not need a pharmacy, we would not need doctors, and there would be no government health care because evolution would be so great and wonderful. We're getting so great in our technology of who we are today, and that's a bunch of lies. That is a sin. Promoting the suggestion evolution is a sin. 
For there is one Creator, and that's God the Father Almighty. And when He made man, He made man in a sinless state of innocence. And man rebelled against the Word of God and became sinners, and death has come. And you will die. And if you die in your sins, you will wake up in a place called hell, and you will burn forever in that place called hell, and you will be judged by God at the great white throne judgment, and you will be put into the lake of fire which burneth forever. That's you as a sinner. And yet the love of God is that He sent His only begotten Son. For God so loved the world, that's the sinners, there are only two classifications of people today. You're either of the world or you are a Christian. And when I speak Christian, I ain't speaking of a Catholic state. I'm speaking about those who have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and has had the second birth where Jesus said, ye must be born again. Now if you die in your natural state, you die as you were born as a sinner, your eternal life will be in torments, being tormented in torments forever. And yet we stand here for the Bible says, preach the word of God, preach the gospel, go eat all the world and preach the gospel. The gospel is that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. And he was buried. And he arose again three days and three nights according to the scriptures. Now why is that? We're having a, coming up upon a time that is celebrated as Easter. And it's supposed to be the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And you got to ask yourself, well why? What is so important about the resurrection of Jesus Christ? What is so important about his death? Millions upon billions of trillions of I don't know how many people since Adam have died. And there are a few men in the Bible, Enoch never saw death. God translated him to be in his presence forever. Elijah was taken up to be with God without death. Moses died and the Bible records that his body was taken up after death. But what we do is we look at Jesus and we see Death. For all die. Jesus Christ, who is 100% God and 100% man, died. And the Bible says, according to the, the scriptures, that gospel that he died, there's a reason why he died. He died for man's sin. In Isaiah 53... As I turn there, Isaiah 53, we will read about Jesus Christ in prophecy. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. That dry ground is us, is the earth, it's dead. He has no form or no comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. That's Jesus. The first coming of Jesus Christ, the Bible says that he would not been plastered on your magazines. He would not been put on your posters for your bedroom. The vision of Jesus Christ, who he was, he would, if he would, to walk through this farmer's market, you would not, you would not even know. You would not go run up to put your arms around that Jesus because you wouldn't know who he was. 
and when he lived on this earth in Israel, they would know because he would put his hands on a blind man, he would receive his sight. He would help the lame, the lame to walk. He would take devils out of the people. And the only way they knew that Jesus was there amongst them is by the signs and wonders that he did to the nation of Israel. <clears throat> but Jesus Christ is not the picture that you see today. He's not the emblem that you behold because the Bible says there's no beauty, there's no desire. He's despised and rejected of men. And that holds to on January 2018 in Daytona Beach at a farmer's market, for he is despised and rejected of men. And you walk on by rejecting God's gift, rejecting the love of God through Jesus Christ is able to save your soul, and you go about picking those tomatoes, picking those oranges, and wish that guy shut up. I don't want to hear about Jesus no more. I am tired of that. Week after week after week after week, that guy comes, preaches Jesus, and he's despised and rejected of men. You squatters are mentioned in the Bible. And the Bible still says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. He said, preacher, you get no results. The Bible says, I am not to get results. I am to preach the gospel. I am to plant the seed. I am to water the seed. And I'll let God give the increase. But Jesus Christ came and suffered as according to the scriptures. He's acquainted with grief. Have you got grief? Have you got troubles and problems? Well, you are able through Jesus Christ to bring those troubles and those problems to God by God being manifested in the flesh by the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not going to say if you come to Jesus and all your troubles and problems will be put away, I will not say that. But if you were to come to Jesus and put your faith and belief upon Jesus that he's able to wash away your sins, he will give you the fruits of the Spirit through belief of your heart, of your confession, of your mouth. He's able to give you peace. He's able to give you joy. But you must first put your trust and belief in him. He's acquainted with grief. His own family rejected him. Mary and his brothers and sisters, yes, Jesus had brothers and sisters. And we hid as were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Of the twelve disciples that followed Jesus for about three and a half years. The Bible records one being at that cross, the Apostle John. You say, preacher, you come out every week and all you got is your wife and your daughter. That's it. He's despised and rejected even amongst Christians. He's despised and rejected even among Baptists. And yet the Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, afflicted. When Jesus Christ came, and from the night of that garden, he was hauled off as a criminal, though Pilate proclaimed three times, Herod once, that we find no fault in him. From the time that he stood before the Sanhedrin, being punched, beaten, cat of nine tails, the thorns, the nails, the brutality of the death of the cross, was God 
inflicting pain and sorrow and torments because of you and me and our sins. You see, we as sinners put Jesus Christ on that cross to suffer and die where we need not to. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. So the brutality of the death of Jesus, according to the scriptures, according to Isaiah 53, is that Jesus Christ took the punishment of sin for us. And the Bible will go to record later that Jesus, in between the time that he said it is finished and gave up the ghost and died, and from the time of that until he arose from the grave, the Bible records that Jesus Christ went into hell and deposited our sins. Now, many do not believe that Bible doctrine. But Jesus went into hell as Jonah went into hell. So, the chastisement, the punishment that God has on a sinner, and the placement of hell that God puts a sinner, has been put upon Jesus Christ that you may not bear it. I'm here to tell you, if you were to die and wake up in hell, you did it needlessly. And you did it by the opposition of the preaching of the gospel. And you deserve to be burned in hell by not believing on Jesus Christ. See, God said, go in all the world and preach the gospel. That's because that's the way to God. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So there's no religion. Your only way to God in heaven, according to Jesus, is by Jesus himself. And the very fact is that Jesus is who he is, and we hear about Jesus, and we know about the cross, is that Jesus suffered and died that you may not. You do not have to go to hell. But you will without Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him. Now I cannot believe for you. Your mother cannot believe for you. I cannot make you. And when we go to Romans chapter 10, as we go there, Romans chapter 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. Okay, now we come to the third part of the gospel. Jesus has died according to the scriptures, and he is buried. And then there's the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Three days and three nights, the sign of Jonah, the prophet, who was eaten by a whale or a big fish. Now, let me ask you a question, people. How many times have you visited a cemetery, graveyard, a mausoleum, and in the natural state, there is the person that dies sitting or standing there? How many people are in graveyards today have come out of the graveyard? Zilch. Your major prophets of religion, your popes, 
your preachers, your priests, your rabbis, your television evangelists, if they have died, they are still in the grave. But Jesus Christ, who has suffered and died and was buried, is no longer buried. He has been risen from the grave by the power of God through the Holy Spirit that we may be saved. And that when the angels proclaim He is not here, that He is risen. And when you have come to Calvary's cross, and have asked with your mouth and have believed with your heart that Jesus is able to save your soul. You come out of that empty tomb as a Christian. I didn't say you were baptized as a Christian. I didn't say if you go to a church you are a Christian. I am saying when you have come through the cross of Calvary with your heart and with your mouth and you come out of that empty tomb as a believer of Jesus Christ, that is a Christian. And only that state where Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And I'm sorry for too many of you, you're going to think you're okay with God with your religion. You think you're okay with your belief, and you may not be. And you may be shocked when you find out where you wake up when you die. Salvation is sought, heaven is sought, only by Jesus Christ. And you've got to be careful. Because the Apostle Paul spoke to the Corinthian church in writing that there's another or an, uh, other Jesus. There's another gospel. There's another spirit. And if you've got that other Jesus, if you are trusting in that other gospel, if you are believing with another spirit, you are not safe. You are not saved. You will go to hell with your religion. You will go to hell with your belief. You will be in hell as an atheist. You will be in hell as a scientist. Only born-again Bible-believing Christians go to heaven on Christianity. That comes forth by believing on Jesus Christ and Jesus of Christ alone, for He is the Lamb of God that take away the sin of the world. Now, if you think you can please God by being good, I am a good person, I am too proper for God to throw into hell, look how good I am, the Bible says there is none that doeth good, no, not one. For there is none that doeth good, there is none righteous, there is none that doeth right, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You cannot stand in the presence of God without Jesus Christ and be right. You will enter in a place called hell because you think you are better than Jesus. And Christianity is based upon the finish, the merit work of Jesus through he suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. To proclaim to man that he is the way the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, for I have believed on the only begotten Son of God for salvation. There is no other. I grew up as a Catholic. That was no good. Baptist. That ain't doing me no good. My goodness, my righteousness rests upon Jesus Christ. The righteous, the holy of God, the only of God. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Your only way to get to heaven is by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. That's it. Don't come up to God as a good person that don't work, for there is none good. There is none that doeth good. There is none righteous, no, not one. You got to put your heart, faith, belief on Jesus with your mouth confession made unto Jesus. And thou shalt be saved. That's it. Faith and belief upon Jesus. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confessions made unto salvation. He said, hey, preacher, what are you doing? I'm going out and preaching the gospel that God's told me, and I'm confessing with my mouth the salvation that God's given to me by Jesus Christ. You see, my salvation's so great. I come out every week for free and preach to you the salvation of God. There is something free at the farmer's market in Daytona Beach. The preaching of the gospel by a man that loves Jesus, by a man that has believed on Jesus, and a man that's not ashamed of Jesus. And we want you to do what God has proclaimed to you. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's that simple. And yet, the Bible proclaims, Proverbs 1. Notice everything's coming out of the Bible. Proverbs chapter 1. I'll never shut up with the Word of God. Never. In glory, I'll proclaim with my lips, Hallelujah, glory, glory, Lord, holy, 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 forever. In Proverbs chapter 1. Wisdom cries without. She utters her voice in the streets. Here we are. She crieth in the chief place of concourse, a farmer's market, in the openings of the gate. In the city she utters her voice, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning. Hi. Hi, vendors of Daytona Beach, scorners. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 22. And fools hate knowledge. You know what the Bible calls you for not coming up and believing on him? The Bible, Proverbs chapter 1, calls you a fool. Only a foolish person will die and go to hell after hearing the gospel message of Jesus. It's so simple, it's so free, and it so has to be done that Jesus said you must be born again, but the free will of God, the long-suffering of God, the love of God is Jesus Christ's salvation. Turn you at my reproof. I will pour out my spirit upon you. I will make known my words unto you. That's exactly what we're doing here. We are proclaiming to you Jesus Christ is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And you in foolishness reject. You as scorners keep ridiculing. And the simple think, oh, I'm okay. Because I have called, and ye refuse. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. Hey, here we go. 
Look at you rejecting the gospel of Jesus Christ, and you are spoken about in Proverbs 1.24 as rejectors of the word, as rejectors of the gospel, as the rejectors of Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. Book, chapter, and verse. That speaks about street preaching in the Bible. And there you are. And when you stand before God, for the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. And you will meet God. I hope you meet him on the side of Jesus Christ, the righteous. And you will say, God, I never knew. God, I was never told. And you will be reminded some way, shape, or form, I don't know, of the preaching that came to you Saturday morning. Not about money. Not about prosperity. Not of riches and fame. But the, the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ that he suffered and died and was buried. And arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That the love of God is that he sent his only begotten son. That because we die there is a gift before we die. The Lord Jesus Christ for eternal life. And God has said go in all the world and preach the gospel. And Proverbs chapter 1 speaks about preaching in the streets. And it says, But whosoever hearkens unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. Salvation is only wrought by God. And salvation is wrought by the rock that rolled at the garden where Jesus was buried. Enjoy your music now because there is no music in hell. So enjoy it. Enjoy the fact that is you are mocking God, Proverbs chapter 1. But God will get the last laugh, Proverbs chapter 1. And you've got to state the fact is, which many of you do not believe, that there is a holy God... And he will hold you account to your sins unless you were to come to the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. And without Jesus Christ, your eternal life is hell. There's no mercy and grace when you reject Jesus. And when you keep going on your way and this, I wish you'd go away, I wish you shut up and things will get better this afternoon, you are not right with God. And this thing of street preaching and everything like that has gone on since the days of Noah. The Bible records that he preached while he built that ark. And they went about their business, as you are. And I tell you, it be to your shame. It will be to your damnation. It will be to you being tormented forever. Rejecting Jesus Christ. You are not safe without Jesus. You are not safe with a religion. There is no safety in alcohol. There are no drugs in eternal life. You are either comforted by the Creator. See, uh, you are either you are either comforted by the Creator or the Savior, which is Jesus Christ, God, or you will be in torment by rejecting God, our Creator, our Savior. Our Creator does not want us to go to hell. Our Creator loves us that He gave us a gift, Jesus Christ, for eternal life because we will die. 
And this message is not to be hidden. It's to be preached. That Jesus saves and only Jesus saves. If thou shalt confess with your mouth and believe with thy heart that Jesus Christ arose from the grave, thou shalt be saved. God raised him from that grave. There is no other person in this period of time that has come out of the grave. All your religious people are still buried and dead when they die. Only Jesus Christ, the righteous, has come out of the grave and seated at the right hand of the Father forever. There is no other means. You must be saved before you die. That's the way to have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And if you do not get saved before you die, you will be in hell for all eternity. People that are in hell today have rejected Jesus Christ as their Savior. It's that simple. And you didn't have to pay to hear the message. And you don't have to pay to get saved. And you can do it right now. You can believe in the Lord Jesus Christ right now. We'll take a Bible and show you how. Salvation is wrought of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. That's it.